All these things that is happening now is politically and p 2 b manipulated, and it is being motivated by the p 2 b campaign, which cannot replace our freedom. I will have made it very, very clear. Simon Epa. Simon Epa. Of course, if you are a member of IPOB or you are part of Biafra Agitation, you will know what Simon Epa is all about and who he is. Simon Epa is based in Finland and he has been accused severally of being the man behind the unknown gunmen in the southeast of Nigeria. In fact, they said that Namde Khan is not happy with him. Is this true or not? We do not know as Namde Khan is battling with his health and is going through a lot in the custody of the Nigerian government um, state security service. Welcome once again to this platform. If you're just coming across, kindly tap on the subscription button and the red notification icon bell. And also, like and share this video. We are going to listen to Simon Epa. He roared and he talked about your presidential candidate. You know, there are a lot of people who have led Biafra struggle, Nam the Kanu. They are focusing on Labour Party presidential candidate. They believe that he would take them to El Dorado. He would take them to where they have been hoping for. Well, Simon Ekpa disagrees with you. He said, enough is enough. It is Biafra or nothing. Do you agree or not? Let us listen to him. Hi everyone, welcome on board to Hopper.tv. Chairman of a community of Ndibo in Finland, you ought to have contacted me. But what did you achieve? What did you try to achieve in college such meeting? To share the message because the propaganda of the state of Nigeria with whoever that have contacted you and other Igbo organization who have ganged up to fight Simon Epa, take it to Simon Epa, they are fighting. You send the message and push it to the media. The message was being spread across different WhatsApp group that, oh, Ndibo in Finland are having a meeting to, to crucify Simon Epa. That is the message that is out there. And I was, I was receiving it from all over the world, that Finland, Ndibo in Finland, those people that called you and you had a meeting with, they had ulterior motive. The ulterior motive is so that they, you are going to discuss and say, let us call a meeting only for even calling a meeting alone of Ndibu against Simon Ekpa in Finland is what they want to achieve. There is nothing else. And they succeeded in achieving something. So what they achieve is that some of them now know that Ndibu in Finland is calling, they are calling meeting for whatever that they are accusing Simon Ekpa and all that. You achieve that. So I want every one of you here who is in this meeting to ask this chairman, as a chairman of Ndibu, we know what we went through we know he has worked with me, he has worked with many of you here. What he did, was he the right thing? He did not contact me. Personally, he didn't reach out to me to ask me, what am I hearing? What is your own side of the story? Even if he printed not to know anything about Nigeria. And I will, so I will make it very categorically clear here that the struggle for Biafra is what we are doing. And the Nigeria state, stage managed killings of our people, they even practicalized it. They did it. Military police have been killing our people, and we cannot just put our hands and watch them. So what do we do? We needed to do something that will shake the foundation of Nigeria. And that is why we decided that we must be sitting at home. For the past one year, every Monday, we sit at home. This particular sit at home has been fought with every mechanism available to the Nigeria government. They didn't defeat us. The governors came. They threatened the workers that if you did not come out on Monday, you are going to be sacked. People did not come out. They didn't sack them. They threatened them that if you did not come out, you are not going to be paid salary. People did not come out they yet. They still pay their salary. For the past one year, they didn't succeed. Now, Mazin Namdekano is in the SS dungeon. Killings in, of Biafra people happening in Imbo State, in Abia State, where this chairman come from, in Ohofia. In fact, in this chairman community, his own community has banned the eating of Fulani cow, which generated a lot of killing even in his own state. He did not, nobody has invited him from Igbo community to have a meeting. How do we stop the killing of Ndiabia state where he come from? Because they have banned, they are the only community 
that ban the eating of full and cow, as I'm talking to you now, in the entire Igbo land. When they were being killed, raped their women, he did not call a meeting. But me, I am not a selfish person. I'm not fighting for Igbo nation. I'm not fighting for Igbo. I am fighting for Biafrans, which Igbo people are part of it. So I am not discriminating who I fight for. Whether it is in my village, they kill people. Whether it is in Enugu, they kill people. Whether it is in Anambra, they kill people. It doesn't matter. Last time, 14 youth, 14 young men were killed and massacred by Bubago in Imo State. The people that called you for this meeting did not have you, did not call you to tell you, do you know that 14 Igbo youth who went for a, a wedding were slaughtered and massacred by a Bubago security outfit? I didn't see you. You know, what more is more outrage than that? I did not see those people that called you now to call a meeting. But like I said, all these things that is happening now is politically and p 2 b manipulated and it is being motivated by the P2B campaign, which cannot replace our freedom. I will have made it very, very clear. I'm sure you heard the man clearly. He is saying whatever it is that certain groups of people, of course, we know that these people are members of IPOB. Some of them are members of the struggle, Biafra. He said, whatever it is that you gang up Whatever it is that you discuss in your corner, in your meeting against me to cut me off, to disfellowship me from the movement, I am by blood a Biafran and I'm going to keep pushing. I am going to be pushing as hard as possible. It is Biafra or nothing. You know, ever since the incarceration of Nam the Kanu, the extraordinary rendition, how he was taken from Kenya down to Nigeria, it seems IPOB collapsed. Um, the structure, the power, the committee that is supposed to do the needful, they are incapacitated. Of course, you know that a deputy is needed, but since Inam the Kanu and his deputy had a fallout, it is difficult. Already, I knew that IPOB was going to crack if there is no voice, loud and clear. And Simon Ekba wanted to stand in. He wanted to put himself there and they refuse because you know majority of these people calling for a new nation they think it's a Wusa, fulani yoruba that is their problem no we have that nigerianness in us that we need to deal with we have to purge it out that nigerianness is what you are seeing play out in biafra struggle and even in the yoruba nation struggle strive namigo talk namigo duam i am the person i have to be this no one wants to give it each other you know that room there is no law that they want to follow why because they are lawless they have lived life of lawlessness for a very long time anyway let us hear what simon Ekpa has to say as he continues to roar and affirm that he will continue to push for biafra nation push against election push against peter obi the obidati movement so if you are calling a meeting and you have achieved one thing which is propaganda yesterday the same Nigeria, that the same Igbo people that are calling you on a meeting and asking you to call all the meeting of Ndibo, go and protest. Let us see what we are going to do to Samanaka in Finland. They were flying the news. You know, most, of, most of you may be happy. Samanaka was arrested by Interpol. Samanaka has been arrested while trying to flee to Israel. Samanaka and the news was flying everywhere. Only for this money, the engineer of that, the pioneer, the main pioneer of that news, called Peter Abakalo, a very highly respected editor of the Sun News. All of them because everybody is desperate for people to be president. He came this monitor projects. One thing is this. We, the Biafra people, ordered Biafra to, to sit at home in protest for the release of Mazen Amdekano, the demand for Biafra referendum, and to make it very clear that no election of Nigeria election will be allowed in Biafra land. And the Biafra people responded. In that order, we also call them because of the modus operandi of Nigeria. They will stop at nothing to make sure they blackmail the Biafra freedom, which we are doing. And if you come out, they're going to kill you. It has happened before. This is not the first time they killed Biafrans during the sit-at-home. This is not the first time they killed Nigerians during a protest. They have killed us even from 1998. Uh, they have been killing Mosul. From there to 2015, 
They were killing IPOB 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, and up to 2022. We found out a way that when we say sit at home, you sit at home. And because the sit at home is working, what do they do? They have to now kill those who are coming out. This is not the first time we order sit at home. We have ordered sit at home for three days. Nobody was attacked. Nobody. It did not have a complete compliance. At least it have like 90 to 95 percent compliance. When the 14 young men was killed in Imo State, we called three days sit at home. Nobody was killed. But this five day sit at home, considering that election is approaching, Nigeria government came out and began their propaganda. Everybody in Nigeria was awakened by the five days sit at home because they know the implication of it. So after all their condemnation, after all their countering order, after all their propaganda, Bia France sat at home. So in order to discredit it, the few people that came out, they started attacking them. Police officer was seen, it is in the news. So what I'm trying to say here is that you've made, made, made uh, references of, uh, you know that they are killing in Enugu, you know that they are killing in Lokbanta, you know that they are killing here and there, yet the people that are inviting you telling you to call a meeting of Undibo in Finland to crucify Simon Ekpa, did not call a meeting. Many women and children have been killed. In Enugu State alone, 50, over 50 people were massacred in a harmful. Who stopped the Fulanese? It was us. The people that called you to go and crucify Simon Ekpa in Finland did not make any statement over 50 people that were massacred in Hamufu. The governors did not bring the military. The, the local government chairman did not bring the military. It was we, the Biafra people, that mobilized ESN. After that community betrayed the ESN security network, we mobilized the ESN to go to that place, and they went there and defeated the Fulani. After they defeated the Fulani, those who survived it, they called to the 82 Division in Ugu. The military came there and bought the villages. Was it the Biafra that bought the villages? Why are these people, where are these people that we are having meeting of meeting of Undi Igbo, Igbo leaders and whatever in diaspora? Where are they to tell you to go to Finland and protest the Finland government that people are being massacred in Enugu? Four corner Enugu, for example, I'm just telling you the things that are public because there are many things that are not in the public which we are doing to safeguard our people. Four corner Enugu for the past weeks has been the den of terrorists and killing, kidnapping by the Fulani men. And this thing was going on. None of you that are calling for Simon Epa head, because all of you are in Finland enjoying. I'm here enjoy, enjoying too. I'm here. Everybody here is enjoying. Nobody is feeding each other. Uh, but I'm here. While you are working and doing everything, I am doing this and I'm doing my work as well. Now, we went to that four corner, defeated the Fulani, and the, 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 the same Fulani called to 82 Division Enugu. The GOC of 82 Division began to summon a security meeting. But in all this killing, you know the kidnapping happening, which is very viral on social media. This particular GOC did not call a security meeting to ask what is going on in Fokona. It is only when we defeated them. He called a meeting and began to ask, who are those going to that Fokona to fight the terrorists there? Pump and play in a security meeting in Enugu. So my people, what we are doing is we are fighting this Biafra freedom and the liberation the way we want it. I, I am not here to convince you. I'm not here to make you to agree with me, just like I'm not going to agree with you whatever you do here because I made up my mind to fight for Biafra. What is the way out? I'm sure that is the question that a lot of you probably might be asking at this time. He has made it clear. He has said it and he has given examples of how the Nigerian security agents, the military, how they go burn villages, they pretend as if it is this unknown gunmen, it is that. What Simon Ekpa is simply saying is this. I am not involved in these criminal activities in the southeast of Nigeria. I have not commanded anybody to do this and do that. But you know, when you speak, in fact, Inam the Khan also was accused. When you speak in a certain manner, that could call incitement. That could be called incitement. That could prompt incitement in a lot of people who are simply looking for an opportunity, something to fight for something to tear people down for something to kill people for i was so sad when i heard that certain groups of people who are southeasterners that is what they said that is the news who are southeasterners who claim that they are enforcers of sit at home will kill their own people now let us look at it so it is okay if you kill your own people claiming that you are doing the right thing and forcing them pushing them to stay home because of your big Biafra agitation or struggle. 
because of Nnamdi Kano. But when a Fulani kill or a foreigner, someone from the outside, kill your people, you say, no, this is not acceptable. Come on, let us be right, at least for once. It doesn't make sense. That's the same you know, thing that they often tell colored people in America. Are you saying African on African or colored on colored killing is right? But when a Caucasian kills African or kills a colored person, you say, oh, murder, murder, murder. We don't say the truth. Do not always embrace when you do these things to yourself and you say it's okay, but when other people do it to you, you want to scream and shout. Let us get out of this nonsense. So, Simon Echo has made it clear. I am not into this. I am not into this. It is the Obidati's group. They are the one that are claiming that I am the one behind this. He has accused all of the committee, Biafra IPOB committee, who are now ganging up against him. Well, what are your thoughts as regards this one? I want to believe that should... 2023 election produce its president that is Nigeria has not broken apart. Maybe Nnamdi Kanu will be out. We are not sure. And when it comes out, let us see. Is he going to come out to scatter, fire, shoot the same way he did? Has he learned something? Will he go to the UK, stick to the United Kingdom, and never ever step into Africa where he can be extradicted, where he can be taken off like this? What are your thoughts? Uh, I believe that even if Nnamdi Kanu is fred, he will not be allowed to leave Nigeria. He will be monitored 24-7. Let us meet at the comment section. Like and share this video. And please subscribe if you have not done so. I say a very big thank you to those who have taken time to subscribe to this channel. And if you're yet to subscribe, kindly tap on that subscription button and also the red bell icon so you will be notified whenever videos such as this are uploaded.